I consider there to be a difference between materials and supplies. Materials being an example of candle wax, paper, paint, soap base, something you're only going to use one time, while supplies are things that you're going to use over and over again, like a pot, dishes, molds. I try not to include those into the price of the item that I'm creating, if I can help it. Six dollars on a pot, but I'm going to use that pot repeatedly, over and over and over again. And I regret not buying these penguin pants. Those are so cute! For this project, you're going to need a few things. A knife. Cutting board. Teacups. They don't have to match, because these don't match. A working stove. I got these candles at like a thrift thing, 25 cents a piece. They're like really old and ugly, but it's candle wax and that's what we're going for. Tongs, crayons, not required, optional. A pot you don't mind destroying. All right, on to the candles. You're gonna take off anything that is not wax or meltable. This is a tack, like a thumbtack. Those are going in the pile of what the fuck? My intention was to save the colored wax to add to the main wax later to see how it looked when it was colored, but I did not do that. Next time, I get more of these guys. That leaves me with this white snowman. My original plan was to then chunk the candles into chunks and put them in the pot. But after a few minutes of this, my hand hurt, and I realize I'm just going to put the entire thing in the pot and it will eventually melt on its own. But yeah, had I chunked it up, it would have melted a hell of a lot faster. Over to the stove, on the stove, and I put it on medium low. Because I don't know what kind of candle wax it is, and I don't know what temperature it melts at, because we haven't done this before. Just kept agitating it just like I do my friends and family. Oh, that's irritating, my bad. They melted down relatively quickly. I wanna say this probably took 10 to 15 minutes for the big chunks to finally get down to its melty, melty part. So I melted all of my candle wax down and now we begin. First thing I do is I took my teacups and I took my two wicks that I fished out of the candles. You can easily make your own wicks with simple cotton thread and just dip them in the wax and you're done. I took some tape and some pens and my wicks and I placed everything together to keep the wicks standing up in the middle. And then I simply poured in my wax. That is not a pretty color. I do not like that color. So I had an idea. I saw this online. I had a crayon. I took off the paper and I tossed it into the wax to see if it would color the wax like it says it will. And lo and behold, to my surprise, a few minutes on the heat to get the wax melted and I had this beautiful rose colored wax. These candles are not scented. You could definitely add a scent if you wished. That is gorgeous. All right, the piss yellow is going back in the pot and we're gonna add some blue. And that should give me a purple. No, it won't. Strip the paper, break it, toss it, stir it, and then pour it. Candle wax, I found out, melts about 37 degrees. So not too, too hot, but still. Wow, okay, that didn't work. My candles both collapsed on the inside, leaving me with these giant craters in the middle, which is... Not really the look I'm going for. They sunk! No! So, on to plan B. Of course, I don't have footage of this, but I simply melted down my blue candle wax and poured a nice thick layer on top. But I underestimated the depth of the crater in my candles. Okay, on to plan C. I turn on the oven to the lowest setting I can turn it to and melt down my candle wax again. In the meantime, I'm going to do this properly with a couple of skewers and a couple of twist ties. And I'm going to put my teacups in the oven this time to heat them up as well. Checking on it often and giving it a little stir, 
But please, don't play with your candle wax. Don't be like me. And now, I have a mess to clean up. Alright, fish out your candle wicks. We're gonna need those again. Place them between your skewers and tighten into place. Do measure them in your teacups beforehand. These were a little bit tall and I had to adjust. All right, take your teacups out of the oven. Yes, they are still hot, but not hot enough not to touch. And pour in your candle wax. One and a two. Then I simply put in my wicks, adjusted them as needed, and popped everything back in the oven. Now my thought process, I'll put them in the oven. I'll leave it for a few moments, just to make sure everything is the same temperature. I will turn off the oven, and I will let everything cool down for about one to two hours, and everything should come out smooth. I was wrong. Lo and behold, somehow I managed to make it worse. I think that's an even deeper. Like how? <laughs> Where's all the color? It's a green! Well, that was a learning experience, wasn't it? Alright, on to plan C. Heat that wax back up, here we go. Alright, I'm gonna pour a little wax into the top of the divided candles. Just enough to fill up the crater. Be careful. Don't be like me. I'm gonna let that cool. Then go in with one more layer after it's completely cooled and put a thin layer of wax over the top of everything. And cross your fingers. Ta-da! Finally, success! Yay! It worked! Okay, they're not the best, but they are flat on top and they look pretty darn cute. Yes, I am definitely not a candle expert, but I managed to figure out a MacGyvered way to make it at least look like I kind of know what I'm doing. Alright, that's it for this one, and I will see you soon with another video. Bye!